Kia ora year 12 and 13. This is the last part of question 3 of the 2015 complex numbers paper. There are three parts in this video um, and the questions are all quite similar so they all involve working with polar form and De Moivre's theorem. Right, the first question is this. Solve the equation z cubed is equal to k plus root 3 ki where k is real and positive. And write your solutions in polar form in terms of k. So the first thing to do here is always draw a diagram um, because sometimes it can be very easy to simplify or to convert from rectangular form, this form, to polar when we've drawn our diagram. And that's the case here. So we've got a little um, similar triangle that is very similar to very similar, it's similar to a special triangle triangle. Okay, so we've got k out here, root 3k up here. Just change my pen over. Okay, so this is this is root 3ki here, and this is k, the real part here. So that means that r for this complex number is going to be via Pythagoras 2k. Now I've done that quite fast because if you're watching this and you're in my class, we've all done trig, so that should feel very easy. If you haven't, um, this is the big idea here. So 1 root 3 here. Uh, and by Pythagoras, this side will be 2. So I can scale that triangle up to be 1k, root 3k, and 2k, and that will all still hold, okay, because the similar triangles, the angles are all the same. Anyway, what that also tells me is that the angle in here will be pi on 3. So what we're solving is z cubed is equal to 2k cis pi on 3. Right, remember cis of theta is shorthand for cos of theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so we can write z as r cis theta, and we're trying to figure out what is z and what is theta. So r cis theta cubed is equal to 2k cis of pi on 3. So I'm going to go on to a new slide, but at this stage you should pause and apply De Moivre's theorem, and this is a pretty um, straightforward merit question. Okay, so r cis theta cubed equals 2k cis pi on 3. We can rewrite the left hand side as r cubed cis of 3 theta. And that equals 2k cis pi on 3. And we're doing that by De Moivre's theorem. What we do now is very similar to equating the coefficients when we were working with cubics. We know that r cubed the modulus cubed is equal to 2k. So our goal is to get to r and to get to theta. So r is equal to 2k to the power of one third, or written as a third, the cube root of 2k. So that's that bit done. Now let's take a look at this side. Well, we've got 3 theta is equal to pi on 3, but it's also equal to pi on 3 plus a spin around a whole revolution. So we write that as 2 n pi. Where's that coming from? Well, we know that 3 theta has to equal this angle here. But we know that 3 theta could also equal pi on 3 plus 1 full revolution, which would be 2 pi. Or it could either equal pi on 3 plus 2 full revolutions, or 3, or 4, or so on. So we can write this down. When we're looking for the solutions to a cubic, we want to be looking for three solutions. Okay, so when you do these, it's really easy when you first do them just to write this bit here, match up this and match up this, and then go, oh, theta must be pi on 9. But then you're missing out your other two solutions. So the way we get them is to do this, to remember that if we spin our spinner around another time, we're going to get another solution. 
So this bit probably will feel a lot like when we did general solutions way back at tr in trig. We get theta is equal to pi on 9 plus 2 pi on 3 times n. And what we do from here is we substitute in a couple of different values of n. Okay, I'm going to do that on the next slide, but this is, this is quite easy. Okay, so we've got theta is equal to pi on 9 plus 2n pi on 3. So let's substitute in n equals 0 first, it's the obvious one. That's saying that my first solution is that theta is equal to pi on 9. Now let's substitute in n equals 1. So theta is going to equal pi on 9 plus 2 pi on 3. And my third solution will just go up to n equals 2. Although I'm going to show you another way to do that one. Pi on 9 plus 4 pi on 3. And that's exactly, well, it kind of feels, feels right because there's pi on 9 there and we're going to get two more solutions and they're going to be equally spaced out. So of course they have to be at intervals of 2 pi, one revolution, split into 3. So 2 pi on 3, that's equal to 6 pi on 9, so this one is going to be at 7 pi on 9. So it'll be somewhere about here. Well, if you're in my class, you know how bad my drawing is, but there you go, right. So that's the first one. And then the next one is going to be at 13 pi on 9. Which is kind of down here. Right, so it should look a bit like the Brooklyn wind turbine. Um, they, and that's not my answer, that's just my thetas. So be really careful, we need to write it back as Z1 equals, Z2 equals, and Z3 equals. But I just want to show you one more thing with that 13 pi on 9. Um, the other way we can get it is that we've, these are all clockwise, anti-clockwise angles, pi on 9, 7 pi on 9. Right, so they're going like this. And the last one's going around like that. We could also write this one as a negative angle, and we get that by substituting in n equals negative 1. So then we'll get pi on 9 minus 2 pi on 3, which is negative 5 pi on 9. Now, of course, these two things are going to give me exactly the same place. right? So this angle here that I'm doing now, that's when I start at zero and I go clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. Or I could go in that direction and I'll get to the same point. So it doesn't matter which way you write it. But what we do have to do now is to just write down our three solutions nicely. Okay, so the three solutions or roots, I can't remember which one they asked for. I think they asked for solutions, which is strictly a slightly better way to word it here. So Q root of 2K, cis pi on 9, and we'll call that one Z1. Z2, the same R, cis of 7 pi on 9, and 3, cube root of 2K times cis 13 pi on 9 is equal to Z3. Now just always check the wording back, did they ask us for polar or rectangular form? And we were asked for polar form, so that's that question done. Okay, on to the next one, which is a little bit the same. Okay, find each of the roots of the equation, z to the power of 5 minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to start by saying let z equals r cis theta. So we have got r cis theta to the power of 5 equals 1. So r to the power of 5 cis 5 theta is equal to 1 by de Moivre's theorem. Right now, so we've got r to the power of 5 equals 1. So r is equal to 1, so that bit was easy. And we've got, we could write this in here as 1 is equal to 1 cis 0, right? So if we're converting that into a complex number in polar form, here's 1 out here. So it's got a modulus of 1, and it's got an argument of 0. Right? Argument is the angle it makes from the x-axis. 
going in that direction. Okay, so we have got 5 theta is equal to 0 plus 2 n pi for the same reason we had in the last part of the question. So theta is equal to 2 n pi over 5. So we're just going to substitute in 5 values. We're going to start with n equals 0 and we're going to go up to 4 and we're going to generate 5 solutions. Right? And those 5 solutions are going to lie uh, evenly spaced out around our circle. And the first one will be like this. So it'll look something like this. Okay, that's, that's bad drawing again. Um, we'll do the substitution on the next slide. So n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. Uh, we'd better have an n equals 0 to start us off, and then n equals 4. So we're going to get z1 equals 1. Right, so that's 0 plus 0 pi. Z2 is equal to cis of 2 pi on 5. Z3 is equal to cis of 4 pi on 5. Z4 is equal to cis of, where am I up to, 6 pi on 5. And Z5 is equal to cis of 8 pi on 5. Now, if you are a little bit OCD and you look at that and you really don't like that Z3 is 4 and Z4 is 6, of course you can renumber. You could make Z0 equals 1, Z1 is equal to that one, Z2 is equal to that one, and that's a much happier way to do it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, but the labelling, is it's more obvious here what you've substituted, but they're both perfectly fine. And what we've now got is we've got our five roots of that equation, and you can see that they are happening at intervals of, so five of them are fitting into 360 degrees. So if you still think better in degrees, which most of, most of us probably do, um, every 72 degrees, or 2 pi on 5, I'm getting a new solution. So there's the first one. Right, one, two, three. Ah, one, two. Yeah, I haven't made my, my, that's, they're not drawn quite right there. Right, but they're spaced out evenly. Now, they're very definitely not spaced out evenly, but you get the idea. So that's the first part of the question done. We're going to use those results in the last little bit now. Okay, let P be the root in part I, part one, with the smallest positive argument. So we've got our five roots. So our first one, our Z naught, was 1. So that didn't have a positive argument. All right, that had an argument of 0. So what we asked for here is the next one up, which is z1 is equal to cis of 2 pi on 5. So now we're asked to show that the roots in part 1 can be written as those things there. We're asked to call that first root p. So now let's take a look at what happens if I, if I do p squared. So p squared is equal to cis of 2 pi on 5 squared, which is equal to cis of 4 pi on 5, by de Moivre's theorem. Right, do it again. p cubed is equal to cis, and that equals z2. Right? So all you have to do for this question, if you see it, is this. So, whoops, p cubed is equal to cis of 2 pi on 5, to the power of 3, which is equal to cis of 6 pi on 5, also by de Moivre's theorem. And that's z3. So we've got that one, that one, that one, and that one. And the last thing we have to do is p to the power of 4. Now, it's so simple, I'm not going to do that in here, and I'm not going to take up another slide. But what we've now done is that we've shown that these roots the z1, z0, z1, z2, z3, and also z4, can be written as 1, p, p squared, p cubed, and p to the power of 4, as required. So it's a good example of a question where it looks, when you first read it, you probably haven't done anything quite the same. And the only hard thing, really, is to work out what exactly do they mean by choose the root with the smallest positive argument. But that's not very difficult, because we know what positive means. It means greater than zero, and smallest means pick the first one that we get to, right, so um, this one here. 
Okay, um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll start doing the 2014 exam paper soon.